Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren, I'm your host, and today we have two special guests, John Sr. and John Jr. McLemore from Masterbuilt Smokers. We're going to talk about how Masterbuilt got started, and we're going to also discuss their new gravity-fed G560 Smoker Grill. That's all the rage right now. I want to apologize for some of the audio. We shot this live on their deck so they could do a demo for our video podcast that you can find on YouTube. But I'll be right back with John and John from Master Built Smokers. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Hey all, this is Darren and I want to take a minute to talk to you about Masterclass. I just signed up for Masterclass and I can tell you what, it's well worth it. Masterclass is where you can learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay, you can learn how to sous vide from Thomas Keller, you can learn how to make Texas barbecue from Aaron Franklin himself. All these classes are available on Masterclass plus many more. Masterclass has great video content, interactive assignments, social interaction with the Masterclass community, all for just one fee. You can either buy each individual class for $90 each, or you can sign up for the annual pass, which gives you access to all their classes for just $180. And that's what I signed up for. Check it out, guys. Masterclass has some of the best online training you can find. Check it out, guys, in the link below. Masterclass, amazing. Now on to the show. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast, everybody. We have John Sr. and John Jr. McLemore from Masterbuilt and Masters of Smoke. I want to welcome them to the podcast. Welcome, guys. How's it going, Darren? Welcome, guys. Uh, Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Um, you know, I know John Sr., and John Jr. So introduce yourselves and just kind of like give me the rundown of who you are and what you do. All right. Uh, love telling this story because it's been in the McLemore family for so long. But back in 1973, my dad, Dawson McLemore, decided to tinker in his backyard with a few products and did that as a hobby for several years. And the company at that point, Darren, was M&M Welding. Years into that hobby, my dad decided products that we were selling you know in the the local area in our, around georgia and where the name came from was my dad said a prayer to god he said i'm the builder you're the master if you will help me run this company be successful with this company i'll name it after you which is where the name master built came from i did that from age 8 to 18 got out of high school and my dad semi-retired in 1984 I became an owner of the company. A couple of years later, became the uh, the president of a small family business. Did that for about 14 years with my brother Don, and uh, actually 28 years. Time is kind of flying by. Uh, from 1984 to 2012, my brother Don decided to get out of the company, and I became sole owner for about four years. 2016 rolled around. We brought in a private equity company um, out of New York to help us grow the company. A couple of years later, we merged with a company called Kamado Joe. And today, Masterbuilt is the legacy from the Macklemore here with our private equity company, two very iconic brands in yep. the industry. We now have five offices all over the world. And it's just been an incredible just for, golly, 12 years now? Something like that. Yeah. It's been a long yeah. time, Darren. So, uh, <laughs> or it feels like a long time. I mean, heck, I'm not, I don't feel that old, but yeah. I feel like I've been in, in the business for, yeah. you know, my entire life. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a great uh, it journey. What's been fun about the products that we've done, Darren, is over the years, most of our successful products were products that we built for ourselves. My our dad fried fish in our backyard, which is why we got in the fish. And he he handmade those handmade the, the those fish fryers. fish fryers in our backyard. Yeah. We got into the smoker business in really the mid nineties. Um, our claim to fame in the smoker industry came in the mid two thousands when we developed the world's best, in our opinion, electric vertical smoker. Um, we kind of owned that industry for a number of years. 
2003, we actually came out with the world's first indoor electric turkey fryer. Today is still a product that's going to be branded master built all purpose fryer for this fall. And we've sold, and then, you know, wow, millions, millions of those. Yeah. And, and now, uh, just this past year in mid November, we came out with the Gravity Series uh, Grill and Smoker. Uh, what you see behind us is the Gravity 560. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that we'll get into a little bit later and then show you a little demo on it and show you guys the grill. But uh, yeah, and what John and I decided to do is we developed the Masters of Smoke because that's what we love to do is teach, eat, and repeat. We teach people how to cook amazing food. We yeah. love eating with our family and friends. And the, the goal is to have everybody repeat it, which is what Masters of Smoke yeah. is all about. And we cook with Masterbuilt, we cook with Kamado Joe, and really all of our friends all over the world. Yeah. So Yeah, and, and, and ultimately, Masters of Smoke is just a playoff of obviously Masterbuilt. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that, you know, God is the master. We're a Christian-based company and, and, you know, live uh, and walk that journey. Um, from a faith perspective, but uh, mastering the art of smoking and grilling and barbecuing as a whole is something that it's a hobby for all of us. Yeah. Um, a lot of people out there would consider themselves masters on briskets, but maybe not on, on butts. And eating and repeating is something you do every day, right? In your yeah. hobby, you do it because you love it. So yeah. it's kind of the premise on what we do, but uh, father and son duo, yeah. just cooking. <laughs> yeah. So let's back up a little bit. So your, your, your dad, uh, John Sr. started with the fish fryers. How did he make the jump into electric smokers? And why did he concentrate on electric smokers instead of charcoal smokers or, and, and, and grills and all, all kinds of things like that? that that's yeah. a great question. I don't yeah. even know. Why, why did he do that? Um, well, <laughs> we actually got ourselves into the smoker business more than my dad did. My dad. Because that was after right. Paul Paul. That's right. My dad started the company, Dawson McLemore, in 1973. And the first product that we actually came out with was a plant stand that you held your plants and your ferns yeah. that built for my mother. My dad built the fish cooker because we fried fish in our backyard all the time. And then later in the mid nineties, um, my dad was thinking about, he's actually had semi-retired in 84 and he fully retired in 98. And in the mid nineties, we developed the smokers because we had so many people that we were doing business with asked us to develop something that was innovative and allowed people to enjoy the art of smoking without all of the hassle. Which really, Darren, that's what Masterbuilt is always about. We love to innovate. We love to be different in the industry. All of our successful products have been products that we researched and developed yeah. and built ourselves. We don't really like to research and duplicate with our brand. So the, the electric smokers fit the need at the time. And I'll give you just a little tease. Later in the fall and for 2021, we're going to have a vertical charcoal smoker that's going to blow everybody's mind. So just a little bit of tease on that. Taking some of this amazing technology right here. Yeah. Um, and just be different in the industry. So the smokers really came from myself and my brother Don developing something that allowed us to expand outside of the Southeast United States and become more of a national company. And today I can't even tell you how many countries we sell in, but um, we're doing a ton of business in Europe, Australia, um, obviously all of North America. It's just been a pretty amazing journey. Well, and to me, yeah, your, your smokers are all made so that it's like you said, easy, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to learn how to, you know, start a charcoal fire and, and, you know, it's not a offset where you got to continually babysit it. You can pretty much set it and forget it. And, um, is that what got you into these, uh, the major big box stores? Because that's, you know, that's where the money is right there. If you get into Walmart, Home Depot and all that, and you guys are in pretty much all of the big, big ones. So. It is, and we, we were selling to just about all channels throughout the United States, but we fit a price point that uh, allowed people to smoke in their backyard for $199 to $399 with these electric vertical smokers. We've, we've actually got a propane unit that is very innovative with patented technology, same premise. It allows you to set it and forget it, not have to worry about it mm -hmm. because it's and it automatically maintains the temperature, which is what our electric smokers did. 
the propane smoker does, new technology we've got coming. This baby without the hassle of you love charcoal, it allows yep. you to have the technology that we had in our electric smokers put into a charcoal real smoker. So the uh, turkey fryer, it started out, you guys were co-branded with Butterball. Is that going away? You kind of said it's going to be uh, a re-release of the turkey yeah, fryer? Great question there. We started with that in 2003 as a master built branded product for about six years. Then we developed a relationship with Butterball and, and had a great partnership with them for, uh, golly, maybe 10 years. Yep. We will still be doing some marketing and some things with Butterball because we still have a great relationship with them. They're still, in, in our opinion, the best turkey that you can buy. But we are going to be re-releasing that product under the Masterbuilt brand this year as an all-purpose fryer, boiler, steamer. Fries up to a 20 pound tree, does amazing low country seafood boils, fish fries, mm -hmm. steam. It is going to be a phenomenal new release in that product this fall. So since you guys um, have, have uh, been merged or bought out with the, um, with the uh, cash infusion, how, how has your role changed, both of your roles changed in the organization? <laughs> Um, I would say for the better, it's definitely different when you have been the owner of a company basically your entire life and then president and CEO of a, of a family business for practically all of my life. It changed in a way that allowed us to bring in a great partner. I stayed on as the president and CEO in January of 2019 and then stepped down. And right now, my role is product development, working hand in hand with our engineers. And John and I both are running around the country doing a ton of marketing and promoting the products. Well, um, I still not, have a, not running around the country at the moment. Not at the moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a very large shareholder within the global company, Masterbuilt and Kamado Joe. Um, it's different in one respect, but it's, it's been great. Well, it, and from my perspective, Darren, it's, um, it's different in a good way for me because I think it's placed us in a position where we get to work a little closer together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we genuinely are best friends and we, we love just cooking together. But my role, you know, for the past 12 years started, my first day at the company was sweeping the warehouse. And I've, I've ultimately worked in some way shape or form every job or position of the company and it's allowed I've been very fortunate to do that and I got my degree while doing it um you got a degree I I got two uh but uh learning here yeah so but it, it allowed me to you know really shape and realize what I wanted to do in life um and it's put him in a position where we get to cook now um and that's our passion is we get, we, we get to cook, we get to talk, develop, um, figure out good ways to do things, bad ways to do things sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, work with our team and, and, and help yeah. shape the product. Well, and, and I'm sure a lot of the pressure is off you too, John senior, that, um, you know, being a CEO, you have a lot more that we have to deal with and, uh, <laughs> than, uh, what you're doing now, of course, but this is, this yeah. is probably your time to have, like you said, more fun with your son while developing, you know, and being excited about this product, you have more hands-on to help develop and market and, and get other people excited about this product. Yeah. That's well put. And I'll tell you, um, it is very different going from being a CEO to, you know, more marketing and promoting those products. We spent a lot of time developing products that had never been developed before. Um, we pride yeah. ourselves on being very innovative. So for me to step out of the role as a CEO, I still wanted to be very, very involved with all aspects of the company. And this role allows me to do that. We travel overseas to Europe, you know, when, when we're going to be traveling again to cook and promote our products there. Uh, we traveled to Australia promoting our products all over the North, you know, America doing that. So although I'm not CEO and president, still very involved, but yep. you are absolutely right. It is a very different role. And for people that are owners of companies and, and CEOs and presidents of companies, especially now in the time that we are in, um, that's a very, very stressful job. So I'll, I'll take my hat off to our team and our current president right now because it is not an easy well, job. Well, and if I could plug him for just a second because he's 
arguably the best leader that anybody could have and mentor. Um, but even for our current president, um, he's still involved in a way that he allows him to do his job, but he's, he's there to help and lead and guide and mentor, yeah, not just me, that. but, um, and he's the best cook that we have <laughs> and he's the best product developer we have. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's putting us in a position to, you know, to, to really be an asset to the company. Yeah, so there you go. I'll give you five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's uh, great to, uh, I'm sure, work with your dad, and I'm sure it's great for you, senior, to be able to work with your son, and then have time to, you know, put your heads together instead of, you know, only spending a couple minutes a day with him. You get to, you get to spend a lot more time with him, I'm sure, and you get yeah. to bounce ideas off you guys, you know, each other, and that's yeah. a good thing, and then I'm yeah. sure you got the president of the company now has faith in you because you've done it for so long that, you know, right. ideas that you bring him, he's going to listen to you. That's yep. right. That's right. And I'll say the same thing about John. It's, it's been great working with my son. We work with our family. We, we pride ourselves on really being a close knit family even more so now. Um, but it has been fun working with John. He brings a different perspective to the table than I have, you know, being older school uh, technology that I did not really still don't understand today <laughs> 30 and work on products like this our, our engineering team does an amazing job but what john and i do is work with them and work with certain people out in the industry that love our products yeah. to make sure that this is going to be the best I, charcoal grill ever put on the market I, and I want to say too uh just to clarify we were not the engineering behind this product yeah. i think we had you know some involvement dad had probably more involvement than uh, really any, any of us outside of the engineering team, but our engine, take our hats off to the engineering team. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they did an incredible job and specifically one guy that I won't say his name, yeah. but uh, shout out to, you know, who you're, who, who I'm talking about, but he yeah. did a great job on this product, but we get to see it from the consumer perspective though. Um, we're, we're super users mm -hmm. in that perspective and we get to bring information to them to say, Hey, here's a way that we can make it better they're much smarter and inclined than we are to then put it in a computer system, work yeah. with the factories and, you know, execute on that. So, right. well, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. And then when we come back, we're going to delve deep into the uh, gravity fed because that's what everybody's talking about. I mean, right. um, that's the thing that's exciting everybody. And I think there's going to be the future of, of your brand for sure. So we'll be right back with, John and John from Masterbuilt. Hey all, I want to introduce you to a company I just started working with, Fresh Jack's Organic Spices out of Jacksonville, Florida. They're a small, family-run company that's fast growing. I've tried a bunch of their different seasoning blends and spices, and I can tell you they are all fresh, all organic. None of them contain artificial flavors or sweeteners. None of them have anti-caking agents or preservatives. They all taste like they were just made for you yesterday. Check them out, guys. They're on Amazon in the link below. They have different sample packs, different blends. Like I said, they also have the individual seasonings and spices as well. Fresh Jack's Organic Spices. Check them out, guys. I love them. All right, so let's get into this uh, G560 Gravity Fed. Where did the idea of this come from? Because there's nothing else out there like it. There's gravity fed smokers out there, but they're usually something that com the competition guys have. And they're usually, yep. you know, seven, eight, ten, twenty thousand dollar $20,000 machines that are custom made. So where did the idea for this come from? So yeah, I'll let you take that one because you were more involved on that. So I'll tell you, we, um, we have an engineer in our office. Um, and I'll just call his name out. There's one Powell that, Love the idea of a gravity series together with another engineer of ours uh, who likes to keep his name <laughs> silent. Our design engineers, we had the idea of what competition cooker cookoffs uh, were using, and when we started the project, project, I said, guys, we're not in the competition trailer grill business, smoker business. I said, but if you will commit to taking the technology of the very first one that we built, that was a $10,000 unit, and take that technology and allow people to put it in their backyard for $499 to $999 in that price range, 
I'll give you the resources and the time and the, the money to put behind the product. So they agreed, project got started, they went to some cook-offs, built this big unit. We took that technology the unit that allowed us to get the very first price point at $499. And the next one that we've got coming out will be under $1,000. Right. So, so yeah, so, so you had the idea from the competition guys, and now you had to shrink it down into to fit a price point and something that people are going to be able to put on their backyard. And how did the Wi-Fi come into that? Uh, well, so uh, technically, uh, the first unit at $500 didn't have a digital interface and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it. And, you know, working with great partners like Walmart and Home Depot, um, you know, that was one of the asks was it was an ask kind of, uh, hey, it needs to have Wi-Fi. You know, and that kind of kicked it in gear that, hey, this thing really needs some technology on it that you don't see at that $500 price point. Um, you see Wi-Fi and digital interfaces um, in, in products that are probably 800 and up, but nothing at that $500 price point. So that's kind of unique. Um, but it, it came into, there's, you know, there's two ways to, to use this grill. One is control and one is monitor. And we tried to build the Wi-Fi interface in a way that keeps it simple because that's the whole premise of our mastering the smoke and making things as easy as possible and bringing competition level cooking to the backyard. Right. Um, but we try to, we tried to make it as easy as possible. Cause you know, you know, we all know Wi-Fi can be a little complex, especially yeah. for the older generation. Well, uh, for me, <laughs> I'm happy right there, but I will admit there have been times that I love being able to monitor what yeah. I put on. Um, you know, we've got the technology behind this product with the Wi-Fi that allows you to get updates. Um, I've learned something uh, over the air that allows you to, while we make changes with the product, because it is Wi-Fi yep. capable and enabled, yep. it allows you to get the current updates that our engineering team does that. And that's helped us tremendously, tr tremendously on the customer service side yeah. um, and being able to service the customer yeah. you know, at the unit. Um, so there's a lot of things that Wi-Fi brings, not just the ability to change the temperature from your neighbor's house. Yeah, and the one um, thing that Master Bill's always done is we think about safety first in every aspect of our product. So with this product, we have it set up to where you do have to press the connection button there when you are going to hook up to Wi-Fi. Yeah. That is something that we're doing to abide by particular standards to make yeah. this product safer. Um, although some products like this are not mandated to do that. We took the route of making sure that we did. Yeah, the that. safe thing, sure. So, so you want to see some wings? Yeah, definitely. Let's okay. see what this thing can cook. So yeah, so this is actually some chicken wings that we put on. And there's two ways that I cook wings on this product. One, I will smoke them at a low temperature at like up from any temperature that you want from as low as 150 all the way to 700 degrees. So as you can see right there, that allows you to get that grill up high enough to sear or low enough to smoke your chicken wings, to smoke your ribs, basically anything that you want from one temperature to the next. And you'll see we're at 220 degrees right now, Darren. So just to kind of keep a time stamp on are you, are you not going to 700? I will, I will as soon as I take those wings off. Okay. So we're, when we go from 225 to 700 in a second, we'll show you how quickly the unit goes from 225 to 700. It only yeah. takes a couple minutes. But. So we've got this one that we're doing just a, a little bit of cooking on. You and, mean to a quick breakdown? A run through on this product right here. But while he's doing that, to your point there, John, hold this. So Darren, we're going to take these wings off because they're actually done. And that's your lunch. The, the, two, the two recipes that I recommend on these wings is if you want to grill them, set the grill at 350 and grill the wings in about a half an hour or set it at 225 and slow smoke them for, you know, between an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how big your wings are. But I'm going to quickly remove these. And again, we had this one set at 225. And... Almost lost one. 
I'm going to take this wheel right now, close the lid. I'm going to set the temperature from 225 degrees. I'm going to take it up to 700 degrees. Okay. Then I'm going to come right here. That locks in that temperature at 700. I'm going to come here on our timer, and I'm going to start the timer over from zero to let this count up. So from 225, we're going to monitor how long. Yeah, so ultimately this is our gravity series grill and smoker. And the reason we call it a grill and smoker is because it does both and everything in between really, really well. So it's 150 degrees all the way to 700 degrees within your cooking chamber. You've got three racks or three levels of cooking. It comes standard with uh, two warming racks. You can add up to two additional standard is 560 square cooking inches. The premise of this style of cooking is it's a charcoal based unit. So we're cooking, our fuel source is charcoal. It's not electric, charcoal is technically a wood. But we're cooking with charcoal. You take a bag of charcoal, any briquette or lump or any style in between of charcoal, we pour that into our hopper. Chris, can you give a quick view down? I don't know if you can see, but you've got some lump in there right now. We're going to close that up. It latches. And then we light down here on the side of this unit, on the side of the hopper. You put a little fire starter in here. This is your ash bin. After 60 seconds of lighting, a, putting a little fire starter in there, we're going to close this up. And this hopper is now a self-contained unit. So it's forcing the, hair, the, the, the heat into the chamber now and then from zero to 225 it's seven minutes from a fresh start or zero to 700 from a fresh start in 13 minutes using charcoal um, a quick quick note also if you're cooking with uh if you're smoking i would say we do a technique called double stacking which allows you to take large wood chunks and you can actually throw those in the hopper with it and that will smoke those wood chunks along with the charcoal. Um, you can, um, if I'm doing a brisket, we did a, a eight pound brisket the other day and we double stacked wood and charcoal and did a 12 hour cook overnight. And that just allows you to have a consistent long burn um, and add a specific flavor of wood that you might want. And ultimately you've got a fan underneath that is forcing air in to your firebox. And then you've got your firebox, which is where your charcoal is lit, forcing air back into your chamber. And you've got a manifold inside the bottom of the, the grill chamber here that is evenly distributed fan or is controlled by a fan. You are getting a very even convection style of charcoal uh, cooking. And the last thing that I wanted to mention was it's the only charcoal grill in the market that allows you to cook with charcoal. And there's nothing under that $1,500 price point, $1,200 ceramic price point that you're going to get in terms of digitally controlled charcoal holding 16 pounds. You can set a temperature zero to 713 minutes and then have the ability to shut the grill down. So you put those slides in and it snuffs the charcoal out. So it's perfect for a family of four on a weekday. And it's going to take charcoal in terms of being predominantly a weekend fuel source and it's going to turn it into a weekday fuel source because I can come home I can have my steaks which we're about to show you and throw on I got my steaks throw them on have my grill up to you know 500 600 degrees whatever I'm going to sear those steaks at in a matter of 10 to 12 minutes I can cook I'm only going to use two to three pounds of charcoal and then I can shut that unit down and I've got uh you know 13 14 pounds of charcoal for the next time I cook it holds 16 pounds of briquettes and roughly 10 to 12 of lump um and then obviously dad just showed you of setting your temperature uh wi-fi bluetooth controller here so basically this kind of combines the charcoal grill and the pellet grill because pellet grill since the beginning have used a convection fan to yep. control control the heat and the smoke and all that so this uses that same um concept but it also it's kind of like almost a reverse flow as well because you got the air coming in one way and going out into the cooking chamber another way right. and going underneath. That's, that's yeah, right. so this is this is the I way got, I I got to interrupt. We are 5 <laughs> minutes 
and seven. 15 seconds. And you're at 700? 700. We just passed 700, so it'll stabilize. Yep. So this grill that I smoked the chicken wings on, we started it from 225 degrees and basically ramped it up to 700 degrees, and it took five minutes to get there. Yep. So while you and John keep talking, um, John's talking about a family of four. Well, now I'm an empty nester. My wife and I are, you know, kids that are gone. So for us, there's times that I want to come home and just take a couple of steaks and throw on, get your grill going, and literally 15 minutes time, put two steaks on. I realize those are small steaks, but we're just cooking for two to prove a point here. I'm going to set this timer. I'm going to reverse count this again to start that. And as thin as those steaks are, I'll take they'll be ready in no time. less than five or six minutes. So what I was going to make, Sorry. my point that I was going to make earlier is it's the convenience of pellet or electric. It's the power of a traditional gas unit, but the flavor of charcoal. That's yes. ultimately what you get in this unit. So, and the, the other thing too about a pellet, because we sell pellet products, we love pellet products, but you don't have all those moving components. It is just a basic fan and gravity fed charcoal. So it's a very simple uh, design in terms of the grill itself. So. We probably love pellets a little less than we do. Well, <laughs> well, and a lot of the, the issues that most people that are coming from a traditional, you know, Kamado grill or a um, offset or any other kind of Weber kettle even will complain that pellets don't produce the same smoke profile as a charcoal and wood based system. So, I mean, that kind of fixes that problem right there. Yes. And, and I've experienced that firsthand. And to be just brutally honest, the products that we've been known for is what I've kind of centered around. I loved our electric smokers. I still have them here today, still cook on them, still love that product. Um, the fryers, just used it this weekend on a trip with our family doing low country seafood boil. This product right here, I love that put me into loving charcoal. I always loved the flavor, but I didn't like it as much as I did my electric right. smokers because of what you just said there. And, this product solves both. Yes, it's better flavor than pellets. Um, a lot of people are saying that. You get the real flavor of wood. If you want more smoke flavor, just add the wood chips to the bottom or double stack it like John said. Smoke at 150 to 225, 275. Barbecue. Grill at 350 to 400. Reverse sear or sear at 700. These steaks have been on for two minutes. Two. Look at that. Look at the M. Nice. <laughs> nice. So yeah, and I'm, I'm not gonna cook though. I'm gonna cook those for one more minute. And and three minute steak. <laughs> now it's, it's a quarter of an inch steak. But, <laughs> but I, I will say this too. These are steaks that we had frozen, correct? That we were, we had just in the pantry. Yeah. Um everybody's kind of pulling out, you know everything out of their cupboard so this is something we pulled out for a quick dinner tonight yeah, but, uh, we actually just the last steak before this one i cooked this is probably a i don't know an eight ounce steak the last one we cooked was three pounds <laughs> we had this big tomahawk in tomahawk three pound steak we cooked two of them and fed the whole family I know. So. well and one of the things i can tell with this since it does heat up so fast from from the lower temperatures to the hotter you don't need to worry about having a indirect and direct side. You know, you don't need to, if you want to reverse sear, you pretty much take it off after you, you know, you do your, your low and slow part. And then within a couple of minutes, it's already hot enough to sear. So you don't have to worry about, you know, it's sitting too long outside, which normally, you know, it takes a longer time for you, for your, um, you know, fire to get heated up. So you really don't need the two zones right. like, you know, that you would normally have on a Kamado or something else. Yep, that's right. I'm gonna let those rest for five minutes while we talk. I'll cut into them. Cool. One of the things too I like about this unit is it's compact. It doesn't take up a lot of room on somebody's patio if they have limited space. Um, it's easy to operate. I mean, it does have a lot of the things that you know are attractive from both your electric smokers and the pellet grills where it's not a huge, you know, big offset type smoker. It, it gives you, um, you know, plenty of, plenty of uh, things you can do with it. 
that um, it's not a one hit wonder, you know, uh, yep. which some of the smokers are because they only reach a certain temperature. You really can't grill on them. You know, you, you're just smoking on them, but this, you can do just about anything you want. That's right. And it's, it holds a true 700. Um, it's not going to struggle. I think a lot of pellet grills get to 475, 525 or so. Um, you know, so you're not lacking flavor or power in terms of yeah, this grill unit, gets but. to 700 so fast, it'll actually start recognizing it early because it will get to 700 and then go just slightly above 700. So it doesn't have a problem getting there at all. I've since turned this grill down to like 175 degrees, letting it cool off. Here's something that's pretty cool, as John said earlier. Yep. These two slides, if you want, you can take your slide and actually clean off your grill if you want to. And then you take that slide and put into the area here. So this grill, we just cooked at 700 degrees. Turn this grill off, close it up. We are now snuffing the charcoal out. I think John just said that so that it does several things. One, you don't have to guess at how much charcoal ever again. Load it completely full with 16 pounds of, of charcoal briquettes. Mm -hmm. we, we recommend Kingsford. We love Kingsford. Put in your lump charcoal. Obviously, we have Tomato Joe lump charcoal, um, 10 pounds of lump. And when you get through cooking for 15 minutes or for four hours, shut it down. Whatever charcoal is left will snuff out, and you can reuse that charcoal the next time right. you cook. Awesome. Yeah, and then the ash looks like it's easy to get out with that ash bucket, so it's not. Um, right. You showing the ash bucket? I did. I yeah, that ash bucket simply just pulled out of the bottom uh, door of the hopper. And and the other thing too, you mentioned was it's a small footprint, yep. which I I personally love. My back porch is not this. This is my dad's back porch. Um, my back porch is a small little covered area, so it, it it's a small footprint. But you can see it's we've had I've cooked a 20 or 22 pound brisket we've done six or seven butts we've done six or seven slabs of ribs if you were to buy the two additional woman racks so you don't lack or lose any capacity when you are are using if you were to use it in, in terms of a smoker yeah um versus just searing some steaks that's right so excuse me you Bless you. have the convenience uh-oh Oh, I know. Oh, <laughs> Spray them down. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the convenience of load light set. You don't have to worry about it. But here's something else that's super cool about this grill. Slide over, John. Mm -hmm. Leave that right there for me. John showed you the ash can that you can take out to dump your ash. Super, super easy ash removal. I'm going to disconnect this. Right in front, you have your grease tray. Now, this is where all your grease drippings go to um, when you're cooking, like the other day I cooked bacon. So it, it actually filled this up pretty good. Did it. So hold that. I'm going to spin this grill around and take a look on the back. You take the entire bottom of the grill out and take your slides and scrape that into a garbage can, okay? And always remember to clean this. Oh, don't you put that on my deck. <laughs> <laughs> clean that into a garbage can. Always do this while it's cool. Put that back into the grill. So instead of having to go down through your, your manifold to make it harder to clean, the front grease straight comes out, the back comes out, super easy to clean, which is very important that we make this point. Um, if you allow grease to build up in any kind of a grill, you're going to have a flare up. The guy holding the camera here is smiling because he experienced the same thing. So, quick shout out name. smoking goatee. Yeah. Oh, you called Check him out. I did. I'm calling him out. Smoking <laughs> goatee. So, he did not clean the bottom of his grill. So, he had a little bit of a grease fire down there. If you will, when you get through and your unit is cool, Scrape the top of your manifold off. Always wash your warming rack with warm soapy water and just scrape off your cast iron grates. Yeah. I'll show you those. Um, obviously, these are porcelain cast iron. Okay, you can see we've been cooking well used on this baby. You've got the ability to sear on one side, flip it over, 
and smoke on the other side. But notice, this is a prime example. We're gonna just go ahead and do it right now. Take your slide and look down inside this grill. Save this for y'all. Scrape off the top of that manifold. Down into your bottom tray. Yep. Put these grill racks back in. Got it. And you are ready. Because ultimately, ready you got to think the manifold. If if the grill grate surface, so the the body probe sits right above that grill grate. So the grill grates are a true 700, which means the manifold below it's going to run about 100 to 125 degrees hotter. And that manifold is sitting right above that, that clean out door. Well, that clean out door, if it's got a bunch of gunk, if the manifold has got a bunch of gunk on it, it's going to be hitting the flash point of grease, fat, drippings, et cetera. So whatever hits right. that manifold, if it's not clean and it sits, and then you go to 700 your next cook, that's when you get what's called a sustained flare-up. That's what you don't want. Right. You yeah. want flare-up, and that's some flare-up. Chefs you, you, want a really good flare-up. Correct. For you, you want recipe. that. You don't want it to sustain, which right. obviously that would – that's, yeah, that's, you don't want three inches of grease in that uh, grease pan because exactly. it'll catch fire. Um, I mean, and people have that issue with, with pellet grills as well. If they don't clean the ash out of the ash cup, uh, you know, it's going to shut the fire down. They'll, they'll have what's, you know, the, the thing will snuff itself out, you know. So right. there's all sorts of, you know, every grill needs to be clean. Even the gas every grills, grill needs to be clean. even a gas grill has to be cleaned or it's going to, you know, catch fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. that's right. And I you know, the warming racks, I clean my warming racks after every use. I just throw them in my outdoor sink and give them a quick clean. I never clean them. And and the reason you do, if you're going to cook the next day or two, not a problem. If you don't cook for a month, I can <laughs> promise you, whatever was left on those warming <laughs> racks is going to be living and breathing. <laughs> Yeah, you see that it occasionally with people, even on the Kamados, that they leave it, you know, for a week or so, and they open it up. There's mold oh. in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know uh, you you've got a Kamado, don't you? Yeah, I've got a classic two Kamado Joe. I love Kamado Joe. That's kind of how I I really started falling in love with barbecue again with with the Kamado Joe product. Oh. So you know, speaking of that, you asked earlier about the the relationship and and us merging with that that brand. We did that because Kamado Joe is, in our opinion, one of the best, if not the best, ceramic grills out there. It has, you know, unique technology and innovation in it with the lift hinge system, with the uh, divide and conquer system yep, inside. The clean the out, look. the cart, the look, the quality, we, the five-piece inner yeah. bowl. We wanted to partner yeah. with a company that complemented master bill they were in the ceramic grill business we were in the vertical we were right in the beginnings of our relationship and it's really been great because it gives us kind of a little bit broader scope of products they were really good at the independent channel we were really good at the mass and the marriage for us has been really good yeah it's been fun pulling two companies together the cultures have had its challenges but it has been a really really good thing for our company yeah, what really attracted me to come out of Joe, um, as far as you know, the the ceramic grills was their innovation, and their ability to look at something and redesign it if it didn't work, or to see a need right. for something to be changed and go ahead and release another level. Like with the you know the classic two is a great grill, but they now with the classic three they've incorporated some other things that make the grill even better and but you don't need to get that one if you don't want to you don't have to buy the super upgraded one you can buy a, a, a just a regular classic or you can get the classic two or you can get the classic three but they're Correct. continually to to you know change things and innovate and that's fix true. things you know so that's what i love i mean i had the original big joe classic with the old um firebox the single piece oh, you did? and they kept cracking you know of course yep. and they kept having to replace them so what they do, they redesigned it. You know, Big Green Egg has never done anything like that. Correct. B Big Green Egg yeah, is always, they, they, they have their, even the accessories are third party stuff most of the time. Yeah. They don't innovate. They just, they made it, what, 40 years ago? And that's it. It hasn't changed. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, Kamado Joe with the hinge, even, you know, I had a hinge problem with my original big Joe. Now with the classic, you know, that hinge is just phenomenal. I mean, yeah. and if you, if you look at a, a big green egg compared to a, a Kamado Joe classic too, it's just blows you away the difference in the innovation. So that's right. And that's really what um, Bobby Brennan and Kerry Coker did. They were the founders of Kamado Joe. They wanted to build the world's best ceramic grill mm -hmm. and they didn't want to just innovate or, or you know, research and duplicate. They wanted to research and develop something that had never been done before. Correct. Um, so I think they did a great job with that product. Yeah. And you guys have, like I said, with this product, I think you guys are along the same lines. You're innovating, you're doing something that nothing, nobody's done, especially at that price point. You know, yeah. it's just that price point puts it in everybody's backyard, not just oh, a select few. Yeah. So, so um, this steak, if we want to cut into this, look at that. So now, my wife's in the background. The, uh, it says right here, teach, eat, and repeat. So I'm going to take a small part of that steak right there and cut it for her. Go ahead, Mom. Babe. That's what you think? Yeah. <laughs> I cook. Is that good? Yeah. So, 700 degrees. How thick is that steak? Mm. Three quarters? Well, three I cook quarters. that steak in three minutes that is probably a good little medium rare right there so all you had to do was leave that on for maybe another 30 seconds but that put that one up nope just take the whole thing <laughs> chris that's not bad there well i want a bite come on now <laughs> we don't have taste of vision <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's pretty good did we answer all of your questions, Darren? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Master Built's been around a while. They've innovated. They've grown. Uh, I think uh, with this grill and what you got coming out soon is, is uh, really um, causing a lot of excitement out there. And um, that's, I'm really excited to uh, try out that 560 myself because I, I've, I've seen it. You know, I've talked to people who have it. I've, I've seen just to give you an example, you know, not to bash any other company, but the Weber uh, smoke fire that just came out their new pellet grill that yep. they put a lot of time and money and effort and engineering into when that hit the streets, it really, they had a big backlash because to me and to some of the people that got it, it seemed like they rushed it to market. They didn't have yep. their, their app wasn't hundred percent built. They had some other issues that they're trying to come back and fix. And a lot of people had, they expected a lot more from it. And yeah. yeah, and it kind of, they've really taken a big black eye on that product. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like you've had any kind of, you, you probably, you're always going to have something with a new product, especially yeah. when you, you know, have it out there, you, things are going to come up, even on a, a ceramic grill, they come up, yeah. but um, not as bad as I think the, these guys have. But I mean, this, well, I can, I can speak personally to, you know, I'm thinking back since November 15th when we launched this product, and we, we've had our fair share of, you know, little glitches here and there, but one of the things that Masterbuilt and, you know, Dad and I pride ourselves on is we personally are very invested and very involved with the Facebook groups, mm -hmm. the community out there. Um, I personally, and obviously through our uh, Masters of Smoke Facebook and Instagram pages, uh, we're personally involved with a lot of cases whether they're good feedback or bad feedback. Um, I've talked, we probably talked to a couple of customers every week that uh, have had a bad experience and we want, we, we personally talk to them and, and try to turn them into a good customer because we care. Um, and, and we know that those, we've been manufacturing products for a long time. Mm -hmm. No product is perfect. Uh, no, no manufacturing process is perfect. No product, not every single product that you make uh, arrives at the door perfect, um, you know, but we, we care and want the, the customer to have a good experience. Right. And we know that we have a brilliant product uh, when it's in the right environment and when it's uh, obviously set up right, no dings, no, no bruises or nothing. And, um, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have great customers and a great product and that makes our life a little bit easier. But uh, we did take um, 
this is now four years since we even started thinking about this product and it took us three years to really come out with the first prototype to be able to start showing it and then we did work with our top customers as to what they wanted with the product which is as john says you know wi-fi and bluetooth was added to the product but we tried to go in a direction instead of following everybody in pellets we followed something that was not being done yeah. Um, which is really what master built is all about. And I, and I tell you real quick, Darren, the challenge there for us has been, if you think about it, we've developed a new technology at a lower price point that's never been done before. We've put a new manufacturing process in the hands of, uh, new factories and put a new product in the backyards with consumers who have never used that product. You've got a lot of new in, in a technology like this at that price point at a retailer that has never sold it before. So that consumer base is not used to that style of cooking. Right. So we're trying to be as hands-on as possible because there's a lot of things that you're having to learn. A lot of people forget to remove their slides before they start the grill. Because <laughs> I've seen that. I've that seen has, that in the Facebook groups. Yeah. Yeah. Name a grill that has slides that you have to remove, right? Well, that's, that's a key part to the grill and a key part to why this grill is different and better but it's just a new uh, routine that you have to get in. It's a, it's a new routine. To be honest, a lot of the people that, that we see cooking on this are previous gas grill users who are used to cooking from a high, medium, and low temperature on their knob. They're not used to cooking on a, you know, do I set it at 450 or 425 when I'm grilling? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, that's just a new element of cooking that we're having to help teach, which is the whole premise of our, you know, Master of Smoke is to help teach uh, eat and repeat with that uh, with with the customer. Well, that's a big important thing to me too is customer service. Not just, especially, and I think that's kind of what bit Weber on the butt is they kind of they weren't acknowledging they had problems. Right. They were they were just kind of trying to you know brush it under the rug and poo poo it, saying oh it's just the people. But well, and you know you guys, I know I've seen I've seen you guys interact with people on the Facebook group as well. When an issue pops up, you guys are right there going, Hey, well, let's, we can fix it right away. Don't right. have an issue. And Kamado Joe's always been like that as well. So that's yeah. right. Um, I think what's been fun too is cooking different foods and really understanding how the product cooks. Have a little fun here. Let's na name a recipe, any, any type of food or recipe, Darren. Any type of food or recipe? Any. Fish. This is through salmon. Great. Um, if you I got a perfect recipe for you. Okay. So take it away. <laughs> so take a and it can either be cold or hot. I prefer to do to, to, to do cold. And I smoke that for 20 minutes at 225. The other the recipe we did the other day mm -hmm. is I smoked the salmon fillet, small six ounce salmon fillet for uh, 20 minutes to 225 and I took the grill all the way to 450. I actually, no, I take that back. I took it to, I took it to 650, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I took it to 650 degrees, which got there in, in, in no time. And it began to sear that, that salmon filet. And I put small mini bay scallops in the outside of the pan uh, surrounding the filets. Bro. It was good. <laughs> so, Delicious. So that's his salmon recipe. It was great in a cast iron skillet. I will take my grill and take these two. That's still a little hot. I'll take these two. And I, I meant to say, I did that on the grill. Oh, yeah, he did that on yeah, the Yeah, because I smoked those to begin with. So I'll put two racks in the middle. Lay a bed of aluminum foil, double, you know, um, two layers. And then roll up the edges of that and take my salmon, a big salmon filet, and put right in the middle of that and put some butter and Cajun and garlic powder. That sounds and let good. all of that melt together, 225 and smoke it for 45 minutes to an hour. Bam. <laughs> now, now that's a question I wanna ask you guys because you guys have an app of course that helps control the grill um, because it's Wi-Fi. Now do you have recipes built into the app or do you see you doing that to some extent? Yeah, so we, we, I got, so I got two answers. One, we tested with the whole principle of guided cooking, uh, you know, where you go to the recipe card on the app and you press a button and it shoots it to the grill. 
Um, and, and we found the, 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 the short time that we released that we found that that's not really what customers want in terms of being able to the, the grill and the app doing it for them. Uh, so we, we got away from the guided portion, but to answer your question about the recipes in the app, we do have those and we have recipe cards and help you explain how to do the recipe. But we still want to give the user, the customer. Yeah. So we do have recipes in the app. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, you know, with sous vide devices that have Wi-Fi, they have, you know, a lot of that where the, the recipes right. built in, but I never use them. I, I use right. some of their guidelines and stuff with times and temps, but I don't, you know, I, that, for me personally, I don't, I, I have my own recipes and ready to go, but I'm sure there's some people out there that, that want those. Yeah. And we, that's, we found the same thing is we, they, they want a guideline. You know, do I do salmon at 225 or 250 and kind of how long and what is the right application for this type of product? Yeah. Albeit a gravity series, an electric vertical, a turkey fryer, et cetera. Uh, so we give them the guidelines, but we still give, give them the ability to kind of critique and manipulate the specific, you know, uh, things that they want to do with their recipes. But let me talk about this for a second. Okay, go ahead. Um, so if we're doing salmon, obviously it's just a matter of getting that salmon to the perfect temperature to be not how thick it is, we'd be in the time. But this meat probe right here is super important. The grill comes with one meat probe and it has the ability to add three additional meat probes. This goes through the side of the grill. So when you want to do your Boston butt, you want to do that three pound prime rib, bone in prime rib, the, the meat probe is controlled right here on the controller. You go from the temp, your meat probe is up top, yep. your timer, and your uh, Wi-Fi enabler. And, and let me plug that real quick, Darren. So the neat thing about the app, where I think the app is an absolute applicable uh, environment, is you have control and you have monitor. Mm -hmm. And there are times where I'm away from my grill and I might want to go from 250 and go down to 200 because I don't want to overcook something. And where that's applicable is I relate that back to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving day of this past year where we had two grills going. We had turkey, two turkeys on one and ribs, ribs. and a, a whole yeah. bunch of other stuff on the other. So we go to my uncle's house, which is about 10 minutes from here for lunch. And we were doing dinner here at, at mom and dad's house. So we get to uncle's, we're hanging out, we're having a good time. And we're like, Oh gosh, we, the, the two turkeys were on the, the gravity fed. Yeah. Uh, what's the temp? So dad opens up his phone, checks that it has two meat probes in both turkeys, um, and was able to turn the grill temperature down because it notified him that his internal meat probe was a approaching a certain temperature. Uh, to me, that's where a Wi-Fi environment is helpful. It's applicable, yeah. um, you know, to the cooking experience. Uh, so that's kind of a neat story that, that to me applies to what we use it for. Yeah, and all I did prior to leaving the house was I pressed that one button that allowed me to be connected so that I could monitor it and adjust the temperature up yep. and down away from the grill. But I, I do, I do want to call out a safety thing for everybody. When you're cooking with a charcoal grill, a charcoal smoker, any outdoor product like this, we always recommend follow the guidelines in the instruction manual. Don't cook in your carport. Don't cook, you know, too close to your home. Don't cook, you know, right up under uh, a, a shed. Because if you do have anything go wrong with the grill, you didn't clean it and you have a little grease fire in there, you always want to err on the side of caution with any grill that you're going and just go by whatever the manufacturer's owner's manual states. Yep. Exactly. Well, thanks guys. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I know that um, we, we kind of touched on it before. There's, there's something else coming out soon and yep. you can't really talk too much about it, but there's yeah. exciting things yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a lot of exciting things happen. Obviously this is the gravity series yeah. uh, <laughs> and I'll kind of leave a dot, dot, that dot there, which means there's going to be uh, multiple versions of this grill coming out. Uh, you know, we, we do. So, Tune in over the next 60 to 90 days yeah. uh, for more information on that. But uh, the last thing I wanted to plug is, uh, you know, Masterbuilt is, is a great company. I want to thank the team that has worked on all of our products. We appreciate you guys. I know the coronavirus is affecting, obviously, the whole country and, uh, you know, the whole world. And everybody's kind of shut down right now. But uh, cooking from home, uh, tune in to Masters of Smoke uh, because we're – trying to show people how to pull 
things out of your pantry during this yeah. time and uh, learning from you guys, but learning uh, while we cook. Um, and the whole important thing here is eating, which, eating. you know, I, I don't know if you could tell, I love. <laughs> But uh, and, and you're we're not just going to be cooking steaks and wings and ribs and briskets. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to show you ways to get creative, not just because we are all kind of stuck at home during yep. this time, but it's a fun way to take stuff out of your refrigerator and smoke it, grill it, and just get creative with yep. your family. And I wanted to thank you, Darren, for having us on. Absolutely. Um, it's been well, a lot of I really fun. thank you guys for being being on fun. because. Um, I, I just, I, I've talked about this with several of my other guests is that the, the way technology has affected outdoor cooking, and this is a good example of it, it's bringing a lot more people outside and cooking. I mean, um, and I remember back when I, you know, date myself, you know, really the only thing that people cook down outdoors were, you know, kettle grills or, yep. you know, offset smokers. But now there's so many different options. And this one here just, it's just, you know, another, just another thing to get people more comfortable out on their patio cooking and bringing a lot different, more different uh, types of food out here too. And it's not just burgers and dogs and, you know, chicken and briskets and pork butts. I mean, there's so much more that these things can do now. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. thanks Chris. Smoking goatee. Yeah. Everybody check mm -hmm. out smoking goatee. Oh, let's touch on this too. You guys, that grill one, didn't it win a, an award at the, uh, yeah, the hearth patio and backyard uh, expo just a couple of weeks ago it did, it did. in uh new orleans it won the uh the 2020 vista, vista award yep. um you know just being a, an innovative charcoal wood fired product so we're super excited about that it just again shows the innovation behind this product so we're very very proud to get that award yeah. thank you well, I want to thank you guys again for being on. I really appreciate it. And everybody, make sure you follow Masters of Smoke on Facebook, yep. YouTube, Instagram, anywhere you can find Masters of Smoke. Follow Master Built. Uh, check out the Master Built Gravity Series. 560 is the one that's out now, and there's some others coming out um, down the road here. But um, I can't wait to start playing with mine. But uh, thanks again, guys, for being on. I really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you having us on. All right, I'll let you go eat your, your wings and steak now. <laughs> well, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Have a good afternoon. Well, I want to thank uh, John Sr. and John Jr. McLemore from Masterbuilt for being on and talking about their uh, company and the Masterbuilt Gravity Fed G560 Smoker Grill. Um, check it out in the link below. Also check out Masters of Smoke on Facebook, Instagram, and anywhere uh, you can find it. Also, make sure you check out the Fire and Water Cooking channel on YouTube, the Fire and Water Cooking page on Facebook, and make sure you like, subscribe, and share to this uh, podcast. Also, make sure you check out the Fire and Water Cooking podcast on our YouTube channel. I'll see you again on the next episode.